dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky. This is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good morning, I'm Taylor Upchurch. Today is Saturday, February 16th. Meteorologist Kelly McShane joins me with the latest on the road conditions. Kelly? Well, Taylor, right now those road conditions, they're a little bit on the slick side and on the messy side. On Pinpoint Doppler, you can see some of us were getting in on the rain action overnight, and some of us were in plenty of the blue overnight, making for a messy commute as we wake up on your Saturday morning. WIMT Studios, though, a little bit of good news. That pavement was snow covered. Now it's not, just the grassy areas are covered, so that is a little bit of hope. Maybe those road conditions are improving just a little bit, but those temperatures for a lot of us, we are still below freezing. Some of us above freezing, especially into the Cumberland Valley region, and that's why those folks saw mostly rain over the last couple of hours, and those folks to the north, they saw snow early on. Now, travel forecast mix still happening in some places, still flurrying, still raining, but it will be ending soon, but regardless, we are going to see some slick spots this morning because of it, but for your afternoon that should all clear out mostly cloudy, maybe even a little bit of sunshine and those roads will start to improve. So for today, your Twitter topics, we will be talking about your road conditions throughout the hour. The mix will end, but we have a gloomy forecast on the way and all of that is coming up at 711 Taylor. Thank you, Kelly. We have a traffic alert we need to tell you about. A mudslide has closed a Perry County road. Officials say the slide happened sometime yesterday afternoon on Kentucky 451, also known as Christopher Road, right before you get to Gregory Branch in Hazard. The slide is near the county garage. The road is expected to be closed until sometime today. Drivers can detour by taking Highway 15. And a former Southern Kentucky high school coach is facing some serious allegations. Former South Laurel girls basketball coach John Walker is accused of sexually abusing a 16-year-old in November of last year. WYMT's Phil Pendleton has more on the allegations that surfaced yesterday. John Walker was suspended when an investigation began last November. He is facing a charge of sexual abuse first degree the victim being a 16 year old. The indictment states that the sexual abuse happened on or about November 2nd. And according to Walker's Twitter feed, November 2nd is the last time coach John Walker tweeted on that account, talking about a fundraiser the next day during the UK football game. Walker was suspended and according to Laurel County School Board officials, no longer works for the system. Sexual abuse first degree is a class D felony, punishable by one to five years in prison. If convicted, Walker will have to register as a sex offender. Walker was hired in 2016 and led the Lady Cardinals to more than 50 wins in several regional tournament appearances. All of this was investigated by the London City Police Department. We are not told if the victim was a student or a player on the team. In Laurel County, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. The Laurel County Superintendent issued a statement yesterday saying that upon receiving the allegation, they took immediate personnel and investigative action and cooperated fully with law enforcement. And three men charged in a deadly Whitley County stabbing faced a judge yesterday. Jordan Miracle, along with twins James and Jamie Muse, face murder and robbery charges. They had not guilty pleas entered on their behalf. Police say they killed 45-year-old Billy Lawson. Deputies found Lawson Monday in a building near the Kentucky-Tennessee border. Investigators think they killed him during a robbery. All three will be back in court February 25th. And police in Laurel County need your help finding two people they say robbed a grocery store Thursday. Deputies say a man and a woman stole from the pit stop grocery on Parker Road Thursday night just after 11 p.m. Investigators say these two people are behind the crime. They say an attendant stepped away from the counter and the man went behind the counter and took two money bags. Police say the two left in a red SUV. But obviously, I think they knew the store probably, but obviously they didn't know their, they had high uh, quality surveillance video because uh, that's how we solve crimes. Uh, all the crimes that we solve around here generally are because surveillance video is available. 
If you know anything about this, give the Laurel County Sheriff's Office a call. A Letcher County organization is one of the 15 finalists that were nominated for a prestigious national award. Apple Shop in Whitesburg is known for their innovation in the community for the past 50 years. Being selected to be one of the 15 finalists out of 9,300 for the renewal award means they have a chance to win a check for $20,000. The Renewal Awards are a series of awards that are made possible by Allstate Insurance given by the Atlantic um, Periodical out of New York, and they're meant to celebrate innovative grassroots approach to community-based problem solving. They are asking for the community's help. For more information on how you can vote for Apple Shop, you can log on to our website, WYMT.com. And entrepreneurs competing to bring business to Beattyville. City and county officials teamed up to create more incentives, asking each applicant to draw up a business plan that could potentially succeed on Main Street. A new shop now occupies a historic building that once housed the health department. I have an inside look from Lee County. 15 vacant buildings losing life on the streets of downtown Beattyville. It's really important that we get those filled. Lee County and the city worked hand in hand, offering a lease agreement of $100 a month for the first year in exchange for a business plan meeting needs of the community. What really goes on for Beattyville is good for the Lee County too, and what's good for Lee County is good for Beattyville. The winner, Vault 606 of the city of Jackson. Owners say they see a bright future for business expansion. This is what it will eventually be the storefront. Uh, so is the paint on the walls and all of a sudden the hang our shelving and everything. To help Vault 606 get on its feet, an incentive utilities package comes with the deal. Water, sewer, and garbage pickup all paid for the first year. Of course, you struggle, especially those first few years, trying to get yourself to sustain. Inventory includes vintage and modern video game systems plus board games. Services are offered too, such as graphic design and video audio production. Uh, we also offer some repair services. They'll be here. But 13 rooms are hard to fill. They are going to reach out to the other people that were in the competition and see if they're interested in space in that building. So it's a really win-win and a pay it forward. Planning to open in coming months. If interested in starting a business or renting space in downtown Beattyville, go to WYMT.com for more information. A Johnson County man is finally home after a lawn lawnmower accident caused him to lose both his legs and an arm. It happened in June, but Willie Owens only returned a couple months ago because a group of volunteers made sure the house was handicap accessible and safe. Christian Appalachian Project volunteers and others teamed up to build a ramp widen doorways and redo the floor plan of the home. Owen says he is forever grateful for the countless hours spent remodeling the house. And it's so great to know that the community still come together. Members of Christian Appalachian Project say more than 90 people came together for the remodel. Some things that were done include adding ramps and adding a new shower. And yesterday was the first day on the job for Attorney General William Barr for this term. He previously served as Attorney General under former President George H.W. Bush. He met with high-level staff at the Justice Department yesterday, getting an overview from those leaders. A Justice Department spokeswoman would not say if he's been briefed yet on Special Counsel Robert Mueller's Russia investigation. We could find out Monday if a Louisville Secretary of State candidate can use his nickname on the ballot. Carl Trump Net says yes, that's his real nickname. He is among four Republicans running for Secretary of State this year. But the Secretary of State's office says he is trying to use the name to his advantage. President Trump won Kentucky by nearly 30 percentage points in 2016. Coming up on Mountain News this morning, veterinarians in Tennessee were working last night to save a Harlan County black bear cub's life. And later in sports, we head up to Lexington for a preview of tonight's big Kentucky basketball game. More details coming up. Some saw rain while others saw snow overnight. I'll have the latest on the road conditions coming up next.